Well, hi there, it's Sandy, and today I'm going to be coloring two cards, both on colored cardstock using Copic markers and colored pencil. The first of the two is a stamp by My Favorite Things, and it's a recent one in their last release. And what I did was stamp it onto some dark blue cardstock using white ink. So I used Lawn Fawn's Yeti white ink. And it's a pigment ink, so I did let it dry before I started messing with it. And I'm coloring the highlights on the top side of the flower. So you can decide which way you want your sun to be shining on. And whatever petals the sun would, would touch, that's where you put the white pencil. And I'm just going to go around kind of creating a C shape on the top side of each one of the flowers. And it's going to kind of curve across the top. You'll see how that plays out. I'm making sure to leave some areas with no color on them. Because if you colored the whole thing in, you would end up without any shadows. And I want to make sure that I do create some shadows. But I am going to go back in with some Copic markers in a little bit and add some of that back in, as well as adding some other colors so that these don't look like they're white hydrangea flowers, that they will end up looking like they are multiple colors. Because I love it when my hydrangeas are partly purple and partly blue, and they just have this really soft transition of different colors between them. There are three little flower blooms on this. I don't know if you call them flower blooms when there's blooms within blooms necessarily, but three clumps. And I've got them stamped on a little bit of an angle so that I was trying to create a corner design for my card. And so I kind of tilted them a little bit sideways. But if you stamp it straight up, you end up seeing more of the three shapes but in this bottom one, I'm making sure that I put more highlight on the top side of this flower that's down here. But I want to make sure that I leave some space in between. There's like a little darkish line in between. And I'll emphasize that more when I get to the Copic marker phase, which is starting right now. So I'm taking a V04 and I'm just going to do some quick flick marks up over top of what's going on here. If I go over the white ink, then that's going to darken some of those dark areas. And I'm also just going over the white pencil. So I'm going over both of them with the purple marker. And that just gives it that really soft feel of a couple different colors in the flowers themselves. I wanted to add a little bit of green to the leaves down there, but I thought, what if I just darken all of that? and let that whole corner fall off. And then I decided to also add in some blue so I get that multicolor of the different kinds of purples and blues. And at that point, you can decide whether or not you've covered up too much. If you go back in now and just pick out a few of the top flowerettes and start to put little highlights on those, then you're gonna increase the dimension. And if you need to go back in and add darker green in order to to kind of really deepen those shadows, you can do that as well. But don't get too caught up in messing with it because if you, you start adding a whole lot of dark, then you start having to add more transitional colors and everything. That just seemed like it was going to be too much work. So I just left it this way. There's some of the, the flowerettes that don't have any color on them because they're in the shadow, but it just kind of creates this really nice soft rounded shape for the flowers. Now this stamp set is from Waffle Flower. It's got a couple of tulips. The sentiments in it are from Mother's Day, but of course Mother's Day is past, so you can pair this with another sentiment. The, the sentiments for Mother's Day are actually quite beautiful and you could use them year round because there's things that say in, in the stamp sets about you know your, your special mom, your special grandmother. It doesn't have to be just for Mother's Day. So if you like to make cards, for your mom and your grandma. It's a beautiful set that way, as well as having these gorgeous flowers. So I'm doing the same thing, but since the flower shapes are different, I have different shapes for the highlights. I'm just putting everything that's on kind of the top and right side of each one of the shapes in white. Now this would be a beautiful card in and of itself, right? But I'm gonna go in and start adding in just a little bit of color. This one is different because 
I have a lighter background color. It's an intense color, this yellowish orangey color. And it's going to react with each of the Copic markers differently. So you might want to cut a scrap of whatever it is you're going to use and try whatever colors you want on it. I hadn't tried this yet, so I was a little freaked out by how much color I put down when I chose this particular green. I think it's a YG17 and it was like, okay, well, there you go. But I had already committed, so I proceeded on and I started blending it then with a YG03. And as I was trying to cover up those white stamp lines, I ended up going over into the background and I will fix some of that later. But I just wanted to try to blend some of this in so they'd start feeling like they were more background things because I wanted the flowers to be the thing that really pops out. And I wanted red tulips. I thought red tulips on this really warm orangey yellow paper would be gorgeous. So I started doing flicks from the bottom up and then, you know, making sure that I covered the petals on the inside. And in order to create the highlight on the petal that's toward me, I left it white and then just went over at the very last with a few quick strokes. And that leaves that lighter color against the darker color that's in the center. So I get multiple layers in the tulip itself. So each one of these, I'm just going to go over it with some really quick flick marks. And I'm not laboring over it. Don't try blending and everything. Don't get crazy. Just do some really quick flicks. As you're going from the, the area where the marker is going over the paper versus going over the pencil, you're going to get a pretty a good transition from a darker to a lighter. So that's one of the reasons for putting the pencil first. You may want to scribble your marker off on scrap paper if it picks up any of the pigment from your colored pencils. And I'm using Prismacolors in this, by the way. So here's where I decided to pretend that I hadn't gone out of the lines on the green by just adding some general, very light green in the background and just kind of squishing some colors in there and figured, I'm just going to pretend like I meant to go out of the lines because nobody's going to notice. They're going to see how beautiful all of this looks and they're not going to worry about it. So I'm adding more of the white highlights again on top so that I'm getting multiple layers and kind of growing the contrast in these by just putting some highlights on some of the parts and not on others at all. So there's less white going down in this layer than there was in the very first layer of white that I put down. But it really gives a nice contrast. Now you can go back and forth if you need to add more of the red marker or that sort of thing, but I just left mine as it was. And then all I had to do was add some sentiments to my cards. And I chose to use Just Wanted to Say Hello from a, another stamp set from Ellen Hudson. Links are all in the doobly-doo, of course, as always. And uh, pictures that you can pin to your Pinterest board over on my website. So you can save those ideas for yourself for later. And I will see you again next time. Have a great day. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.